As long as it's what you want, Terry. Hey, what? Me and the baby, you know. I mean, if you want. Of course her, I do. Don't keep asking. Oh, I'm sorry. I keep going on about it. It's just well. Well, it's what I've been hoping for ever since I found out we're having your baby. Well, before that, really. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Listen, I feel like getting out of here for a bit. Uh, I'm going out. Oh, can we come, me and Brad? Well, I don't know. Oh, you don't mind being seen with us, do you? You're not ashamed of us, are you? No! Look, I've told you. Don't keep asking things like that, OK? Go and get the kid ready. I'll not be five minutes. Oh, you're going out then, are you, young Trisha? Yeah, taking a kid for a breath of fresh air. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I'd wait till you'd gone on and your dad wants the float, you know, for the till. And you keep the cash in here, do you? Yeah, well, in a secret place. I mean, we don't tell nobody. We don't tell the staff. We don't even tell Betty. OK, Ma, I'll get the picture. If you think I might come and burgle you one of these days, then I'll buzz off. No, it's not like that. It's your dad and his silly rules. I mean... I don't mind you knowing where it is, as long as you don't tell him. No, I'd rather not know, Ma. That way, if you ever do get burgled, at least he can't blame me. Oh. Right, it's one o'clock. Do you fancy going out for a spot of lunch? No, I'd just soon stop him. Look, you'll be with me, you'll be all right. You'll be as safe as houses. Well, it's not that exactly. It's not that I'm frightened. You were great in the Rovers last night. I was very proud of you. Do you mean that? Yeah, of course I do. I know what you went through, and I'm proud of the way you came out of it. You see, you're like me. You're a survivor. Well, I'm not as sure as that as you seem to be at the time. I was terrified. Yeah, but you didn't crumble, did you? You came through it. Yeah, well, it's not, it's not as if I've suddenly got some phobia about going out of my nice, safe flat or anything. But what it is, is everybody know what happened to me. Everybody's looking at me like I'm some freak. Tattooed lady or something. <laughs> no, they're just glad you're all right, that's all. Yeah, but maybe. But they're also nudging each other and going, that's her, the one that Don Brennan, the mad taxi driver, tried to drown. <sighs> Look, be glad they know about it. If they just heard a whisper, they'd be coming up in droves saying, is that right what I heard? All that, I mean, you would be reliving it over and over again. Do that anyway. Vera, I'm sick of these crates. Yeah? Yeah, Blue. Are you going to ship these empty or what? Uh, right, my little swamp duck rides away. There we are, my son. Jack. Thank you. Yes. You're a friend of Don Brennan's. Well, I was, but I don't know about now. Y yeah, all right. But can I ask you something? I don't know what to do. What's up, son? Well, I live in his house, you see, and there's a phone bill. And they're going to cut the phone off if it don't get paid, and these other bills. No, 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 that's not your worry, lad. That's what my Uncle Fred said. Yeah, well, for once your Uncle Fred's right. Don Brennan has got more to worry about than owing a few quid here and there. I mean, that's now compared to what he's done now, is it? Suppose not, no. No suppose about it. Jack, get them flaming crates out of here. That's what we've got a yard for. Give me strength right! You'll have a bit of room in your house, won't you, right now? Just you and Rosie there. So? I need a bed, Kev. Not again. What the hell's happened now? Well, let's just call it woman trouble. <coughs> oh, did you, uh, come see Trisha? Oh, yeah, look, I, I said a few things to her that, well, I didn't really no, mean no, and... Don't, don't tell me, son. Uh, anyway, she's not here. Uh, she took the baby for a walk. Uh, I'll tell her, well. I'm wasting my time, is that what you're telling me, Jack? Yeah, I think you are, most of pity. I didn't know when she was well off. Do you know, I shouldn't say this about my own son, but he is no good to nobody. Well, if he's the one that she really wants, I don't know, maybe it's best for her. He'll dump her, you know. Still, she's a grown woman, isn't she? No, if you want my opinion, I think you're best well out of it. I see you. Oh, hiya. Oh, hiya, Gary. You know Terry, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Hiya. Oh, and he coming on? What a grand little chap. Yeah. He's got his dad now, you know. Come on, Gary, I'm gonna be late. All right. 
See ya. All right, see ya. What's up with you now? Nothing. Can you not stand looking at little kids now? Leave it, will you? Hello, Tricia. I was hoping to see you. Well, she doesn't want to see you. So push off and paint something. Is that right? You don't want to see me again? You heard. Now stop pestering her. You know where to find me anyway. So what you call women trouble then? Sal being away. Oh yeah, that's part of it. Is there any other part? Look, this is between you and me. Don't go any further, right? Okay. Natalie Oryx. What about her? She fancies me. I'm certain of it. I mean, last night she was all but saying it was there if I wanted it. So what's the problem? Blimey, with the missus away, making it nice and easy for you. I'll get stuck in. Yeah, well I'm not like you, am I? You're yeah. that big yet? Of course you are. You call that women trouble? You're no trouble to me, I can tell you. on his way here. He's outside now. Will? Yes, Rita, I think he's after me. How do you mean, after? So it was you picking up them papers. You know, you moved that fast, I could hardly see. Uh, <laughs> so how are you, Mrs. Walton? I, I'm all right, thank you. Good. Oh. Evening. Hello. Uh, spring in the air out there today. Well, we could all do with a bit of that, couldn't we? <laughs> we could, that. I was just thinking, how would you like to go out for a drink this evening, eh? A drink? Aye, I, I could call for you about seven o'clock, say, and uh, we could pop across the road to the Romers, or, or maybe uh, if you felt like stretching legs, I thought we could take a walk in towards town, eh? Oh, well, if that's what you thought, I can tell you you've got another thing coming. Oh, I know widowed women are considered to be fair game. No, Especially I... if they've got their own house and no children to get in the way. Well, it's not on. Oh, well. I'm sorry I troubled you. I'll bid you good evening. Mavis, whatever's got into you? The poor chap was only trying to be friendly. Yeah, I came in to ask you, Terry, when are you supposed to be going back to work? Give me a ring this morning. I should be back next week sometime. Yeah, they must think well of you. I'm the best salesman they've got, ma'am. And they know it. Baby's uh, asleep. Oh, do you know, it's the best baby I've ever come across. <laughs> do you want a cup of tea, Lou? Yeah, it's a... Here, pass that to Jack. Matter of fact, I'm uh, thinking about giving him a notice. Well, you can't pack a good job up. Not these days. Could get a job just as good, maybe better. A lot nearer here. This side of the hills. And me and Trisha could find somewhere to live around here. Well, don't worry, Dad. I'm not planning on being a burden on you and me, ma'am. Look, you're not a burden. Oh, Trisha, hot oh, baby. Hey, and Trisha, I was just thinking, I mean, it was just a thought, like, what about getting our Tommy back off the Orton's? How would you feel about our Terry getting him back? I'd love it. Well, it's a great idea, Mum. I can only try, eh? Well, they're a bit tricky, the Orton's. They're a bit on the devious side, you know what I mean? I'm going to cash up for the bank, Vera. There's three days' takings, one banking. Yeah, no. <laughs> Hey, but, you know, you could actually apply to council, you know, for house. I mean, I think kid is. It's worth a try. Maybe. You never know. But we'd still buy his own place, eh, Trish? Get a mortgage. Yeah, we could do that, couldn't we? I mean, other people do it. Why shouldn't we? Oh, and a garden for baby, yeah. And you see, I could keep coming round and babysitting, you know, if you fancied a night out. <laughs> I know your dad don't say much, but, well, I know that... He'd be happy to see you both settled, he would. Hey, Kev, it's your birthday, mate. And here's your present. Hey, I've told you, I'm not into anything like that. Evening. Oh, don't want to stop your working, Kevin. You're not. We're just thinking of packing it in. Well, I'm here on business, so I don't feel too guilty. I think we should have a serious chat about the equipment you're going to need for the garage, if you're going to maximise your potential. Yeah, well, I'm all for that, Natalie, but I'm afraid it's going to have to keep... Got to go and pick my daughter up. She goes to her pal's house after school. I mean, come round here tomorrow morning. How would that suit? Fine. No, I can't. 
just remembered. I'm tied up tomorrow morning. I'll tell you what. Why don't I pop round to your house later tonight? Okay. I always think sooner the better, don't you? Don't fight it, Kevin, mate. Just lie back and think of England. Right. Are we opening now? In a few minutes. Just sign out the floor. Right, there's 40 quid in that till there, Vienna. Right. Uh, anything I can be doing for you, Dad? No, there's not much doing for about half an hour or so. Luke, uh, while it's a bit quiet, I'm going down to the bank. Three days taken there, plus this dinner. I can be shut, Dad. You ought to leave it till tomorrow morning. No, it's all right. They have a night safe. I'll just drop it in. You want me to do it for you? No, thanks. Like I said. Well, it's no trouble. You mind stretching my legs anyway? No, you're all right. I'll do it. Look, the lad's trying to help you. Why do you keep snubbing him? It's OK, ma'am. It's OK. He thinks that I'm going to run off with his money. Yeah, I bet you do, I know. You're always that same. He can't do what right for you. It's OK. I'm used to it by now. Yeah, well, you shouldn't have to be. Look, you should be a proper father, you, instead of picking on him all the time. He's trying to help you. All right, all right, if it'll stop you moaning. You know where the bank is? Corner of Albert Road. The night safe is next to the cash machine. Just drop it in. Yeah, OK. Here, yeah, want to be careful. There's some dodgy people about. Oh, don't worry. I can look after myself. Well, uh, see ya. Hi. See ya. Because if you do, it'll go all over the show, won't it? How's that? Somebody's knocking. Yeah, and I know it'll be as well. Mummy! No such luck. Hey, I thought it was you. Come in. Brought you a bottle of wine. Peace offering for disrupting the routine. Thanks. Come through. This is Rosie. Hello, Rosie. Remember Tony? He used to work at the garage with me. Well, this is his mummy. Hello, my mum's the way she's at my dress. I know. Oh, well. Sit down, Natalie. You want to discuss equipment for the garage? Well, I've had time to think. Oh, Kevin, we don't want to spoil Rosie's tea. We can talk about that later, can't we? When Rosie's in bed. Oh, Rita! Well, come in. There's nothing wrong, is there? I just thought I'd come and see you. What I wondered, I mean, with us seeing each other all day in the shop. Well, all right, then. There is something wrong. Oh, well, whatever it is. I mean, anything I can do to help, you've only to ask. Not with me, lady, with you. Now, listen. I do understand what you're going through with Derek, because I've been through that myself. Yes, I know you have. Shall we have a sherry? Go on. <laughs> I, th I think I know what you've come about. It's that business with Wilf in the shop. It is. Has he really been pestering you? No. Oh, I don't know what came over me. I mean, he seems quite a nice man. Well, you turned on him like a wild thing. Oh, dear, was it that bad? I suppose it was. Well, I'm glad you know it. Because you gave that poor fella the fright of his life. And if you say he hasn't been trying it on with you... Oh, well, he hasn't. Oh, I, I'd best go and see him and, and apologise. Good idea. Ask him if he's got a mate. I'm kidding, just kidding. I'll say this for Sherry. It really makes you fancy a vodka. Not nice, sweet sir. She's a sweet little girl. I'd have liked a daughter. Oh, well. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Mm. Is the wine OK? I mean, it's not special. Oh, that seems fine. I don't go for wine, what's me? More of a pint of bitter, man. Anyway, about the garage. What about the garage? Well, you said you wanted to discuss it. So sort of what equipment we need and what we can do without. Well, I did. But I think the mood's gone now, don't you? I'd rather talk about, you know, everything. I enjoy your company, Kevin. I like being with you. That's all right, isn't it? 
Yeah, I suppose. Look at the time. It's nine o'clock. He could have been to the Bank of England by now. Well, it was you said that we should let him help us. Well, something must have happened. I mean, he could have been mugged. No, oh, if it was something like that, we'd have heard. Do something. Don't just stand there. This is three days' takings we're talking about. How much were it? Well, with this dinner time, just short of two thousand. Two thousand? How can he just stand there? You think your lovely son has made off with it, don't you? Look, I don't know what to think. Good night. Good night. Good night. Look, you shouldn't have let him take it. You should have gone yourself. Oh, so it's all my fault now, is it? Eh? You want to get your head right about Terence? The last we see of him, good riddance. What do you mean? It's going to be last. We'll. Sarah, where have you been? We've been that worried. What's this, eh? What are you playing at? Look, where's the money? What's happened to the money? Ask him. There was no money. Just this rubbish. What, what's going on? I don't understand this. Why have you opened it? Why didn't you just drop it in the night safe like you're supposed to do? Because it felt wrong. Oh, it felt wrong. Don't give me that. Well, I was just putting it in the chute, yeah? And I thought, funny, this doesn't feel like banknotes. So I thought, well, maybe my dad's given me the wrong envelope. Yeah. So I opened it. Look. Newspaper. He doesn't trust me. Mm -hmm. He thinks that I would thieve off you. Right, well, tell me this then. How come it took you so long? I mean, you say you got to the bank, then you opened the envelope. Where have you been till now? Went for a couple of drinks on the way. No, no. I'll tell you what happened. You thought you had a bungalow money, so you walked it. And you got on a train before you checked how much you'd cop for. That's what happened, wasn't it? Look, hey. Don't be yeah. so stupid. He wouldn't just take off without Trisha and Brad. Of course he would, you fool. Do you hear this? This is what he thinks of me. Look, everybody can hear us. Get in the house. Go on. Here, Samantha, you'll have to manage. Working late? No, I've been up the pub. I didn't think I'd be very welcome here. Oh, look, please, Chris, can we start again from the top? Because I think you've got the wrong idea about me. And maybe, maybe, I've been taking one or two assumptions about you a bit further than I should have done. Well, I thought we were doing okay until last night. I know, I shouldn't have lost my temper, but the thing is, this isn't my house. And I get a bit edgy about what goes on in it. I get it, never happened. And I suppose, ooh, God, how honest do I want to be here? Oh, the hell with it. I was a bit jealous of your girlfriend. I do quite fancy you myself. You've got great taste. <laughs> I expect it's your diffidence and modesty that attracts me. <laughs> That'd be it, not my amazing body and terrific wit. Nah, ten a penny, that kind of thing. It'll be your natural shyness I really go for. <laughs> what, well, I fancy you too? You? You fancy anything with a pulse? No, no, I don't, I don't. In fact, I fancied you from the first moment I saw you. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> Took me a while longer. Not much, though. Well, why don't we do something about it, then? Let's go upstairs. Pardon? I said why... I you? know what you said! Honestly, Chris! Just when I think you're a really nice guy, you go and turn me right off! What's wrong now? You took somebody else upstairs not 24 hours ago. I thought you might have seen that. I'll tell you something, Ange. Your generation get a lot more upset about things like this than my generation do. Oh, that'll be it. My generation. Sick to death are you getting at me? I've had good reason to over the years, Sunshine. Do you really think I would trust you with 2,000 quid of mine? I wouldn't trust you with the Tupney bus ticket. Look, where's the money? What have you done with the Don't money? Don't worry about it, love. It's somewhere safe where he can't get his sticky fingers on it. You see? He's calling me a thief. I can hear you upstairs. You wake the baby. Why did you open the envelope? Just answer me that. I told you, because it didn't feel right. I just knew that you were up to something. The old father is accusing me of trying to steal his money. <gasps> Set a trap for him, you see. And he fell right into it. Setting a trap for your own son. I had it with him. This is the finish. Oh, oh, don't say that, Terry. If he wasn't my father, I would have decked him for some of the things he said to me. You've always been rotten about Terry. All the time I've lived here, he's never had a good word to say about you. Always trying to turn me against you. I've had it up to here with you. That is rich, that is. Right, well, someone's going to have some flaming door, I may as well. Terry Love, who needs me? We don't need him. I could get my stuff packed and we'd be gone tonight and I'd be glad to go. Look, you don't mean that, Trisha. Yes, I do. 
Because I'll be with Terry. And you've always been rotten about him. I'll get me stuff, love. Come on, Jamie! Stop kidding yourself. You're going nowhere with me. Or your snotty kids either. Terry! Well, I'm getting out of here right now. What you do is up to you, but don't kid yourself that I want you. Terry, you don't mean that. Wake up, you daft cow. Take a look at yourself sometime. No. Get off. Get your hands off me. Hey, don't you touch her. Keep out of this room. <laughs> Terry, you don't mean hey, it. Look, look, she loves you. She's, she's got your baby. Look, look, let him go. The best thing you'd ever do for yourself. Save you a load of grief. Smart little traps. <laughs> You're nothing. Terry, Terry, be with Get you. off! I've warned you. Yeah. Oh. Ah! Ah! Stop him! Are you sure you all right, love? Get off me, you! You've hurt him. Terry, you all right? <laughs> well, that's the last of the wine. Yeah, well. It's late. Oh, come on, Kevin. The night's young yet. For you, maybe. I've got Rosie to see to. The garage to get going. Do you know, as a business partner, you are very impressive. But I can't help wondering just what kind of partner you'd be for pleasure. You know, as compared to business. Is that Rosie heard? Well, I didn't hear anything. I'd better just go and look. Kevin, listen. I'm not trying to make you do anything that you don't want to do, OK? I mean, I'm not going to hurl myself at you, you know. Never thought you would. No. I'd wait till I was invited. Look, Natalie, I like you. I mean, I do as a partner. The garage needs the money in. Well, I couldn't afford to buy it out now, anyway. I don't want you to buy me out. No, but it might be best if I did. Look, I can't take any more. Me and Sally's very happy. We have our ups and downs, sure, but we're very happy. And I want it to stay that way. Yeah, and so do I. I'm not into breaking marriages up, Kevin. Anyway, I'm sorry. I can see I've embarrassed you. No. Not really. Yeah, well, whatever. I think I'd better go. Right, well, I'll see you tomorrow. <sighs> you will. Bye. Night, love. Terry? Is that you? Are you all right? Accident. Mind your own business. I'm trying to help you. Stuff your help. I'm sick of a lot of you around here. Get lost. Look, are you uh, sure you're okay to drive? Yeah, I'm fine. Good night, Kevin. Good night, Kevin. <laughs>